All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our collaboration. Brigitta and me are back with another one. We're excited to do this for you today. Um, so it's going to be a pick a card reading. Basically, you're just going to pick one of the three groups and we're going to both do our interpretation off of it. So, yeah, this is Brigitta. We're gonna, probably going to post a video on both of our channels, I'm thinking. Her channel is yeah. Aqua Arcana. I'm the mother of tarot. Is there anything you want to say before we get into it? Um, I just wanted to say, so sometimes where people might find themselves when listening to both of us, maybe um, you're going to be more drawn to Megan's take. Sometimes you might be uh, more drawn to my take. So please feel free to choose um, what suits your story. But yeah, and the topic we're doing is why this person is or was in my life. So we're going to try to dive deep and see what's happening behind the surface. Yes, I'm excited. Okay, so there's one of three groups to pick from. So go ahead and pick one of your groups and meditate. We're going to put the timestamps below in the description box. Once you pick your group, you can meet us at your reading. All right, so group number one, if you pick this group, we have the renewal card. It says rege regeneration begins with decay. I love these cards. They're so pretty. I love that. So I feel like, I guess the first energy I'm getting from this card is, I feel like this person that was or is in your life you know it could be someone in the past it could be someone in your present has really I feel like it's been a rough relationship I feel like it's been it's had its highs and lows and I feel like you, there was a lot of growth a lot of growth a lot of learning um, and a lot of self-reflection of the kind of people you want in your life um because it says regeneration begins with decay. So, it, it, you know, decay is like the death card, right? In the tarot. So it's like there was some sort of death and, and rebirth within this connection, or there could be currently. So I feel like that's the overall energy we're getting. So we'll pull some more cards. And uh, anything that you get from this, this card? Sorry, I was tuning into my Oracle card that I pulled. So I'm going to let you go with that one. Okay, I'll, I'll let you read the oracle cards that you have uh, next to you. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting a message that with this person, with your dynamic, there wasn't great communication. I feel, I feel as though you learned a lot, though, about how to communicate because the communication was rough. There was a lot of misinterpretations, and I feel like you had very different energies from this person. Um, so I feel like spirit and your guides were really helping you strengthen your throat chakra, and you almost went through this discomfort to realize that, oh, like, I'm uncomfortable. I have to start speaking differently. I have to start speaking up. I have to defend myself. I need to uh, put myself first and not just bend over to this other person. And I feel like with this person, whether it's current or in the past, um, I feel like this was a past energy. That's the vibe I'm getting, but it could resonate either way. I feel like you were kind of stuck in this the same cycles and same energies, but once you broke free, things started to move faster for you in your spiritual growth. Like I have the chariot here in the action card, and I feel like there was just a lot more movement forward into the right direction that was to fulfill your soul. And yeah, I have the end of a tough cycle approaches. So some of you, if even if it was a past relationship, there might be some of this person's energy still in your field. I feel like you've you've moved on from them and you've forgiven them and you've, you know, even looked at the relationship differently. But sometimes like the fourth step I realize is like practicing acceptance in it, like acceptance for what happened, but also for where they're at, that you can't like fix them or help them. 
that they have they're on their own path now and their own journey and they just have to you have to trust that you know they're going to be okay and you have to just live your life and focus your energy on yourself yeah because don't you agree like even if we like break up with somebody or if we move on we don't text them we forgive them you know if we're still worrying about them if we're still thinking about them and worrying about them if there's still a cord there there's still like mm -hmm. an attachment for sure for sure yeah. you know i'm gonna um include a real life uh story here um i think yeah. other people like hearing that there was yeah. um, my friend was talking to me and she was like listen um, I did everything. I did the cord cutting. I did everything, you know, we got with this that's connected to this person. And I can't still seem to, you know, clear my energy from them. And then we talked and talked and talked. And then she said something really important. She was like, you know what? We're not talking for like three months, but I'm afraid if this person will reach out, what's going to happen? So I said, listen, you already waiting for this person to reach out you haven't even if you cut cords even if you do everything if over here you haven't literally said bye to this person yeah. that's why you're afraid when they're gonna show up if you were so in your power um i don't know prince charming can show up it doesn't matter what kind of person you know they wear um yeah. You would be like, I'm sorry, no, like I'm I'm not in it anymore, like mm -hmm. not vibing. So, yeah, you know, when you were talking, do you have anything else to add on to this story? Um, no, no, I think what you're saying is like, yeah, anything, anything that you're getting that adds to that or anything different. Yeah, I have a lot to say. That's why I was like, okay, oh, yeah, but check. You're good. Gonna... I'll add more <laughs> later, but you go for it. Great. So. Yeah. When you were talking, I pulled cards and oof, guys, what an energy. We started with, I said, hey, why is this person in, in your life? It seems like for a lot of people, this person has crossed your path. And I think some people might have mm, mis misunderstood this connection at the very beginning. But that was meant to be. You had to somehow trick yourself into this connection and think that maybe it was something that it really was something else that it really was um and a lot of people i'm feeling for pile number one might have taken a lot of power from this connection so we started with karmic relationships here which popped up it says orient energy polarity soul growth conflict right so that's the kind that popped up at first then we have the seven star sisters birthing creations Tapestry of life expression. And that's what I want to talk about. This card as well as Orenda card, which says honor your mystical creative force. So I feel like for a lot of people, what happened right after this connection or maybe during it, they suddenly have uncovered some kind of talent. Uh, maybe they were more in tune with their own femininity, their own moon intuition, or feminine energy in their life. I don't know how how this um, connection navigating them towards that but it seems like this connection led people to focus more on self-care as well as their own intuitive gifts um, and mm -hmm. abilities with the empress and the high priestess here so mm -hmm. it seems like this connection was here to somehow elevate people's abilities and show them what they truly worth and show them where they want to go there is one more group of people it seems like some people started questioning, listen, what kind of connection do I really want? And um, is that I'm getting a sexual uh, pull, like almost like a magnet towards this person? Is it something that is actually good for me, you know, or I feel like I need to focus on something else? Yes, it's very alluring. There's a lot of red color all over this street. There's a lot of passion here. And I think some people might have mistaken this in intense magnetic pull for something that was very high intense you know energy mm -hmm. that with this person mm -hmm. and it can happen sometimes i've seen it happening many times where people misjudge uh, co connections like that chemistry is very alluring and pulling and sometimes you can think oh my god this is such a 
soulful connection. It's amazing. But really, your brain is tricking you. So maybe for some people, that's exactly what happened with the two of swords here. This person's eyes yeah. are completely white. They're like, I can't see. I don't know what it is. Because yeah. the king of cups is probably the person who they were with. Um, he's standing in the cold. So, yeah, I have all the emotion, all the warmth, but I'm standing in the cold. It's kind of cold out here, you know, around me. Um, now, what I'm also picking up, I think a lot of people might have started taking interest in spirituality a bit more with the priestess here, or started finding answers about how it actually is and how these spiritual connections work and which one is which. It seems like pile number one people might be focused right now on taking it easy, and that would be an advice. Um, mm -hmm. Take it easy, rejuvenate if you haven't already with the Four of Swords, and work on building what it is that you really want to build for yourself. Three of Pentacles and a Ten of Pentacles here. You're building your own heritage, and it seems like you're already, a lot of you are in really powerful place here. One more message for other group of people. I'm sorry, I'm just jumping here. Okay. Uh, this person had to teach you something that's to do with either formalities, um, either some kind of legalities I'm seeing, and um, maybe that's something that you were not really good at before, but it seems like there is something that this person is good at where you maybe were not, and they inspired you to learn a bit more of this. Mm -hmm. So that's all that I'm getting for pal number one. Okay. Yeah, no, I love that. That made sense. And it's funny when you were talking about that artistic expression, you know, kind of coming into your spiritual gifts and, and I had the queen of swords and it says the painter. And so oh. I was thinking that like there was some sort of artistic expression that yeah. was coming through. And then we have the swords energy. And I think about like, you had to like, cut this person out of your life to be able to freely express yourself in like a mm -hmm. safe space. And um, yeah, and then I got the let it go card. And um, I like how there's two hummingbirds because I feel like they're saying, like spirit saying to let this connection completely go, um, to practice within your meditation um, mm -hmm. that, you know, accepting that it's over completely. And because there's this new energy trying to come in, because I did get the Knight of Cups. Mm -hmm. So there's an, it could be in the form of a friendship or romantic, but some new energy is trying to come in because once we completely cut cords with somebody, then we allow space in our field for new beautiful energies to come in. And so this is just confirmation that, and I feel like a lot of people deep down, like know that they need to, um, you know, be done with it, but mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's some maybe doubts like well maybe this person is my twin flame or maybe this person you know but deep down i think intuitively you know so it's just really trust that intuition mm -hmm. and trust like what's in your heart space yeah and it feels like with this card a lot of people are already watching this person go away over there you know they mm -hmm. just like i'm here and they're there and now is the time of you know self-care so yeah that's yeah. actually good. I like that. And I like how you brought up that Queen of Swords, which is a really creative Queen of Swords, right? I've never seen it anywhere else, like, for me, <laughs> like that. Um, um, so, you know, music and art comes from hurt, in a way, or, you know, sad mm -hmm. feelings. So I'd say maybe some people want to start creating something and put it out there. There can be an amazing project that will come out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Channel that that pain channel that experience mm -hmm. you know that's how we grow from even further and find more clarity you know it, i find so much clarity through my artistic expression yeah and through joy and and all of that so it's yeah that's really beautiful i love that cool should we pull more cards should we move on to the next group how do we feel I don't know. I feel like I said everything. Um, I feel like maybe we should peek into the next person that this pile might uh, be okay. with to end yeah. it on a fun and exciting note. I like that. I like that. I did get the King of Swords, which I wasn't sure what this energy was, but I thought it might be part of this Knight of Cups. But we'll we'll clarify. We'll clarify. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say very quickly um, until I forget. If some, if one group of people thinks that there can't be um, 
better sex or attraction to anyone else, they are wrong because I have the devil reverse. Um, oh. saying, hey, you can't have that. You got to let go of this devil, you know. But I'm picking up the devil here not as a negative card, more like a sexual attraction. And uh -huh. it seems like some people would be like, I would never have it like that or I'd never feel this attraction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got the first card that came out for me was the Ten of Cups. So I feel like whoever you are supposed to end up with is going to just bring so much fulfillment, more than you could even realize that you could get from somebody. I feel mm -hmm. like you're going to like blow your mind. And these next few cards, I feel like when you first meet them, you're not going to know that right away. Like it might be like a slow build or there's not going to be like an immense amount of clarity. It's not going to be like, oh, that's the person I'm supposed to be with. It might be mm -hmm. like, is it? I don't know. Or we're just friends and it's, it's for a purpose. Mm -hmm. But I was just feeling that energy too. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. As you are talking, I pulled the seven of coins. Um, but I must say here, uh, for pile number one, I would truly give it time with the next person because I'm picking up that some people might go for the same pattern. Because next to the um, devil reverse, I pulled the magician. I don't like these two together, ever. And then mm -hmm. we have the knight of wands that's looking towards that way. So I'd say truly d decide what you want. Because maybe some people just want great sex. This is not, you know, not not something that's bad. But if you're looking for a long term, I'd say take it slow with the seven of coins the next time. Because if you do next to it, we have the nine of cups, which is your wish fulfillment. So maybe some yeah. people want to write down what kind of qualities values the one next person to have and that way you can ground your thoughts and wishes and when you write it down you look at it you know the next day and you're like whoa you know i didn't think uh that it's that deep for me yeah 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 and i love that because i just pulled right next to my ten of cups i pulled um expect a miracle and mm. it says have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered and next to that i got compassion it says release judgments of yourself and others. So it's like you're you're releasing some of this energy, this like toxic energy towards yourself. Um, maybe some like frustration or some shame you put on yourself. And this could be subconscious, but something mm -hmm. like that. And when you when you work on that more and just give yourself a lot of compassion, I feel like this new energy is gonna come in. And and I really feel like, I mean, I've noticed this within my life is that when I really start to love myself for exactly who I am, even my flaws, and I just send a lot of compassion towards myself, then I start to like good people. Like I start to be attracted. Like, you know how girls are like, oh, I, I don't like him, he's too nice. Or like, you know, he's too, mm -hmm. he's too good or he's too boring. Well, that's mm -hmm. because you don't completely love yourself. When you completely love yourself, you like the nice guy. Mm -hmm. You like, like it changes. And I, I noticed that in my life. I'm like, oh, like as soon as I started to really love myself, I liked all these good men. I'm like, I wouldn't have liked you a year ago. I would have only wanted, you know, a hot six pack and a, you know, whatever. Um, but it's true. If your perception and your taste will change the more you focus on yourself and work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about the boring part. Um, that's something that I... Uh... I've done in the past. I'm like, oh, you know, like I got in relationship with this person um, and it became so boring. Why? Because first of all, um, I wouldn't put my 100% in to be spontaneous in relationship and to do all those things. So I was kind of like, okay, so you have to somehow entertain me, right? I would mm -hmm. still try to do it, but not as much as I did it with friends. And I'm like, listen, this is part of your problem. This mm -hmm. person, yes, personality wise, that's why we split because we were not meant to be together. But I could have had so much more fun if I actually put a bit more effort into being the person that I want to have, right? Yeah, yeah. So that boring part is partly our own problem too, right? So it's not yeah. all the time, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. It's your it's your perception of what a relationship should be. Like we see how relationships should, should be based off of our parents and our, you know, our peers and then like society and movies. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, this is how it is. So if you don't give me this excitement or this mm -hmm. adrenaline or drama or whatever, then it's not going to work. 
And so we have to change those beliefs. We have to practice that awareness and be like, oh, this is just a made up mm-hmm. belief in my head. And like, yeah, then you can, once you're aware of it, you can start to just release that. And yeah, because I had all kinds of those my perceptions. <laughs> like, yeah, that yeah, It's good yeah, to have yeah. high expectations, but you have to be careful with not, you know, seeing the difference between the high expectations and the false perceptions or exactly. the false beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to start pulling cards for numbers two, unless you have anything else to say. No, we'll leave it at that. Thanks, group number one. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let us know if you like this uh, collaboration and we will see you next time. All right. So group number two. Oh, God. So what's going on here? So you pick this oracle card, it says emptied. The ending and beginning lie at either side of the same door. Isn't that a beautiful card? It is. I'm looking at her root chakra. Yeah, yeah, me too. So the purpose of this connection, hmm. I feel, I almost feel, I feel good about this connection. I don't know. She seems so like relaxed. I feel like this connection to teach you how to feel safe, um, feel connected to the earth and feel more relaxed in your own body. Look at this forest almost looks kind of creepy. Like it's like, you know, yeah. kind of kind of sunset and she's just laying there like I don't have any fears in the world (laughs) yeah exactly I like oh I like this it's so pretty I I've had this deck but I don't think I've seen this card yet so I'm excited okay I'll pull some more (laughs) but yeah I feel like this is really a healing a very healing connection Mm -hmm, for sure what I got, yeah, I got the Knight of Cups. Look at that. Oh, um, this is sweet. And I got the Three of Cups. So for some of you, that this is romantic. For some of you, this is friendship. But yeah. for some of you, this is the first romantic partnership where you feel like they're your best friend. So mm-hmm. it could be different for everybody watching. But I love that. Yeah, I'm picking up a lot of earthly energy here, and it's very calming and very sweet. Mm, I love that. Oh, true love. <laughs> Look at that. It's like, I feel for this group that you really come to really love yourself. And because of that, these supportive connections are coming in to like, help further your growth and just and I feel like maybe they're not with this queen of swords in reverse I feel like maybe they're not the typical people like if it's a relationship maybe it's not the typical person you're attracted to um (laughs) if it's a friendship maybe it's not someone you typically be friends with it might be like that too but I got this milestone card and it has all these trophies and awards Mm-hmm. And, and I'm also getting the energy that for some of you, like for another group of you, that this might be a person coming. The purpose of this is exactly like the future. Yeah. 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 Like it might be something you feel intuitively is coming soon or you think about it a lot. Or maybe you're like you getting signs that there's some sort of like good connection coming. Mm-hmm. maybe in the description we'll have to put like what is uh you know the purpose of this connection past present or future like <laughs> you know we're all over the board Ooh, I like this card. This one says, uh, be bold, make the first move. <laughs> oh, so you might have on? to make the first move, group number two, when you meet this person. <laughs> I feel like that just confirms that it's a future person right there. I don't know. Or maybe it's somebody that you like that you're scared to say something. 
Yeah, it's or, or the viewers or the person actually. It seems a bit like, hmm, someone is not used to something here. It's the first time I'm hearing it, this happen to me that way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it feels foreign, like a foreign feeling. Yeah, and this card says nothing is set in stone. <laughs> I think that's so funny. I love when the cards just keep confirming, you know, like this hasn't happened yet or it's going to happen or. This is interesting. I know. See, I'm picking up different decks as well for this pile. It's like, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like changes are coming soon. I feel like there's going to be like some movement in your life For sure because, like i'm getting that energy too and then i have healing the heart mm -hmm. a lot of heat, deep healing going on for this group in their heart space maybe this group deals with like anxiety too i'm thinking or it's almost like you're anticipating something that's kind of what the energy i feel mm -hmm. are you ready i'm good i think i'm good yeah. for now yeah, go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what you started with, you said this person makes you feel, you said, either safe or secure. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what kind of feeling I'm getting here. I think for a lot of people, so I'm going to stick with as if this person um, was in their life already. So, some of you guys remember this is someone coming. So, people translate, you know, the story, what suits you. But it seems like this person somehow took half of their burdens and difficulties and made them feel like they don't have to go at life alone. That's mm -hmm. what kind of energy I'm getting here. And it seems like this person taught some people here how we can both uh, bring qualities that are very precious to us. And almost like I'm seeing, you know, two, two little lights. Um, and there was one... There is our viewers holding a light and that person that they're talking about, right? And they put it together and it's like, whoa, look what we have. Um, but it seems like a lot of people around the time they met or around the time that they are going to meet this person, there's going to be a drastic, massive change in life for them. And mm -hmm. everything will start moving for the better. I'm seeing some kind of a trip or some kind of a journey that they might be taking. I have a couple of cards talk about it. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this person has inspired other people to learn and to seek for what it is that they're really good at. Like some kind of motivation is coming through here. You know, listen, like someone would tell you, hey, you're really good at this. Why don't you do that? And if someone else told you that, maybe you wouldn't believe it. But because this person said it, you're like, wow, actually, maybe I'm going to aim for the highest. And mm -hmm. this is a very inspirational inspirational type of connection there's yeah. something very unexpected happening here either some people want for a massive shift massive you know i'm seeing a dis distraction my old life um is no no more with me so i don't know if people moved or people want to move here and to leave certain things behind it seems like they're Something was dragging for too long and this person came into their life and changed things up completely, but not not for them, but kind of pushed them a little bit. That's all that you needed, guys, pile number two. And then bang, you have this massive, you know, explosion. And for some people, I still, you know, from this deck, from the magic of your article, I have the witch card that says the magic you seek inside of you is inside of you. Let it flow. Maybe some people started, you know, getting interested or have some kind of ability uh, come up. Or maybe this person was the one who holds um, some kind of spiritual ability or gift, as it, as they like to say that. But it's almost yeah. like um, you'd meet someone who's so strong and who is so intelligent and who's so passionate about life. And they somehow give that part to you and you're like, oh, my God, thanks so much. Um, so there's a lot of that grateful energy that I'm feeling here for pile number two. And I think some people might have um, suddenly wanted to change things around 
really quickly in their life or to step into something that you never thought they would. You know, so a lot of the unexpected energy that I'm feeling here is just very like, wow, look at this. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's funny? I have another message coming through too. But like, you know how sometimes when we read for people, there's like one pile that really resonates with us. Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like that when you read, when you do pick a cards, like one of your piles? really resonates this one is like describing my relationship to a t so i when you were talking i just kept smiling so i was like yep 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 yeah um and then the other message and i'd like to share that because i think it you know just shows how strong of a connection we have with our viewers and i think that's really beautiful mm -hmm. um but with this queen of swords in reverse and the high priestess in reverse i'm getting this energy that even though like this person makes you feel safe or makes you feel, you know, it has this different energy, you know, and it's really beautiful. You're still dealing with some fears of completely opening up and, mm -hmm. and, and communicating certain things because in your past you weren't able to. So it's really, really hard to, you know, completely open up or you feel like you're being judged or you're not, you know, and it's not that you're being judged by the person, but you're just, you have this anxious feeling about, like losing this connection or like, you know, letting, you know, having it go away because it's so good. It's like this fear. And yeah. just to, just to know that you can be completely open and honest and it's not going to change the dynamic. It will actually bring you two stronger together. Um, so just to be aware of that when you feel like hesitant to share or to express um, some things that you weren't able to in the past with previous friendships or relationships that this dynamic is as safe and different and and you're able to do that mm -hmm. for sure um i don't even want to elaborate on this pile because <laughs> it's just like i don't even know why people are watching this reading but <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think you know i think for this one i think the energy of this person is like they know it's good they know it's amazing but they're i think they're healing some of their past fears right now of rejection. Yeah, I think it's and from I both like sides. They're completely opening up. Yeah, and it's just like, well, this is scary. Like, I don't know if I'm doing this right or, you know, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. just like doubts coming through. Exactly. But yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're going to be great. You're going to be great. <laughs> All right. Okay. So thank you, pile number two. Thanks for hanging out with us. We hope you enjoyed this collaboration. Comment down below if this resonated and what you think of it. And we will see you guys next time. I'm so glad you, you are doing all that YouTube stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, bye, next. <laughs> yeah. See ya. On to the next one. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay, pile number three. So if you picked, ooh, I like the imagery on this card. This says radical self-love. We can only receive love to the extent that we unconditionally love and live the truth of ourselves. That's what we talked about in one of the piles, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Self-love. I think it makes sense, though, because a lot of the reasons of, like, past connections are to bring us closer to ourselves. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I mean... The thing that I've learned, and I talked about this, I don't know if you watched my latest YouTube video, but I, I'm really proud of it. I'm really excited about it. It's about- I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, what you have to watch about? It says, this new realization blew my mind. The title's kind of dramatic, but I really felt like that. Like I was like, this blows my mind. And it's kind of about how we attract people into our lives, like friendships or relationships, or even, you know, Co uh, co-workers and the way that they treat us the way they talk to us the way they treat us is how we treat ourselves yeah and it's how we talk to ourselves right in our inner child and like the reason these people are in our life is to magnify this energy to like bring it to mm -hmm. our attention so our bodies will heal it's like a we actually attract people in our life that are mean to us to heal ourselves like it's mm -hmm. a self-healing thing so i kind of break it down like that explaining the examples and then i talk about like how to use like this energy for your benefit so when somebody treats you bad how to use that and how to like write lists it's like i don't know i just feel like it was a good like step-by-step -step kind of talking about that because mm -hmm. we all know that the um you know our reality is a reflection of our inner world 
But I think when you break it down specifically in detail, it really helps people to work with that energy and practice more awareness to be more mm -hmm. aware of it, you know, and changing their dialogue. And I kind of talk about that. So for sure. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> you can tell I'm I was excited it out. About during the video too, because I was like, I was kind of talking too fast, but I think it's well turned out good. So <laughs> you'll let me know what you think. Ooh, this okay. Is okay, for this group, I'm getting the energy that this connection is more of a friendship or a coworker versus romance. I don't know what you're mm -hmm. getting, but it's like this. A lot of work. What's that? Work. Work. Is that what mm -hmm. you're getting? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I got the three of pentacles and I'm like, yeah. And I feel like this was a really toxic person. Like maybe seemed really fun and like had the energy that they were they were good for you or nice to you, but there was like deception, like there were two sides to this person. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm feeling. Like maybe you you kind of let them lead and and decide what you were gonna do and you just kind of followed them. And it kind of got you into trouble and took you down the wrong path, or like, like maybe you partied with them after work or something like that, or maybe they deceived you in the workplace, but they act really nice to you. And I, I'm getting this message that spirit was trying to get you to stand up for yourself and, and be more of a leader that you naturally are and lead in your light versus following the crowd. And you learned that like, okay, if I want to make better friends or better coworkers or start a business, I need to, I need to be a leader and, and shine my light because it's powerful and people mm -hmm. need that more. And I feel like this person is still, I feel like this is a present connection. Yeah, it does seem like it's still ongoing. Yeah. And I feel like the person watching, like group number three, I feel like you know that you need to get away, but you're so loving and so kind that you don't, you feel like you'll be mean or you feel like, oh, I can help this person or like you're always making excuses and not, you know, it's, it's, you, you're trying to be nice and you're trying to be a good person, but spirit's like, no, like it's time to move on from this person. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you want me to talk? Okay. You go. So the energy that I'm getting here from um, people that are watching, I keep hearing enough is enough. And then there is a bit of anger. So it seems like this connection had to happen so that pile number three would start to put themselves first. See, it's good to be a good human, but not to let anyone cut you. It seems like, you know, the energy that I'm getting here, would it be a boss? Would it be, I don't know, even a romantic partner? Would it be a friend? It seems like pile number three was given too much. And they thought maybe that they are doing a good thing. Um, they don't want to hurt people. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. And by that, the more they did it, the more the spirit, whichever energy, the work with ancestors uh, got, I'm actually feeling, you know, ancestors and spirit guys face palming themselves saying, you did it again, you know, you gave too much again, we're trying to teach you a lesson, put yourself first, it's, this is not a bad thing. So if I had to describe the situation, that would be a boss who kept, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing a person, and they knew that they could give them like 10 times more tasks and that viewer would still do it. They would try their best because they're such good people. And that's why I keep hearing enough is enough. Now, why you had to be in a situation like this or a similar way where you gave too much is to actually recognize how much you can take. And then you can take this power of yours and the ability and invest in something that is on your, of your own here. 
the eight of coins as well as the nine of coins i would say guys mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like you belong in a company or you're probably yeah. striving to be entrepreneurs or be independent here and that's exactly why things were happening that way for you to actually let go of a situation that is meant and to know that you have more options because what you can create pile number three is something that is actually beautiful i think you're not dreaming um you need to kind of i'm hearing level up your visions and dreams and your goals because you can actually achieve anything that you want but maybe it comes back to family and someone was constantly put down but put down and said you're not enough and therefore that reflects in current relationships so it seems like this connection is almost like a reminder of what needs to be dealt with and how much power these people have and i keep hearing i'm not gonna beg anymore so i don't know who said that but it seems like maybe someone tried to overpower this um group of people or someone tried to, you know what i'm getting like it's oh this is intense almost like you know what narcissists would do and i don't like to use that word unless i really feel like it uh mm -hmm. where they would take your take away your identity and then you don't know who you are anymore and then you're like oh my god this is actually me who's the problem i'm doing this wrong and i'm doing that wrong and then you end up being in the situation where you know it's all stress and fear but you still keep on giving right um and you don't think you deserve anything um, this card is the unexpected reward in reverse and you're like, I don't even know where I stand. I don't know who I am anymore. So it seems like for panel number three, you are being asked to put yourself first and I can't stress this enough. And I think a lot of people have realized that. Um, and when I looked at the hangman here, it seems like I keep hearing sentences for panel number three. I have been stripped naked, you know, that's what I'm picking up with this, um, hermit over here. Yeah. almost like someone took away almost everything they had to stand their ground and fight back but um, maybe at one point they were not as strong um and this is a big big learning experience we ended the waiting with strength so it seems like a lot of people are on track already here and the fortune will turn a lot of realizations with the ace of swords here too you know oh my god a light bulb moment this is so delusional i'm hearing why was it like that so sorry mm -hmm. had to put it out there this no, is intense. that was good that was good and i heard also like when you were saying that i was hearing the message of you're learning the different the difference between giving love and giving away your power because i feel like mm -hmm. with this person you gave them a lot of your power but you thought that was love but it was your power and now you're learning yeah spirit teaching you how to take it back take your power back because when you're an empath and you're very loving and you're open, it's it's easy to get those two mixed up. Like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. just giving them love, but really you're just just giving them all your power and then you become drained and you become kind of lost in, in your own identity. Yeah, for sure. And I got um, two more cards I just wanted to talk about. Um, and well, a few more, but and then we'll wrap up this reading, but I got the Coyote Spirit Trust in Divine Detours which makes a lot of sense because I feel like, you know, the spirit animals working with you to, to take you in a different direction in life, you know, mm -hmm. to like start your own business or do something like that. And then we have the grasshopper spirit, which says, take a leap of faith. So, you know, taking a leap of faith in yourself and your, your abilities and your power. Yeah. Um, and then I got bring love into the situation. So even though you're, you know, trying to take your power back, you can still do it in a very loving way. It doesn't have to be done in an aggressive way. It can be done mm -hmm. with a lot of love and compassion. And it's just about oh being gosh. open to that. <laughs> compassion. Compassion <laughs> for others. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's funny. Yeah. Because I think sometimes people think like, oh, if I have to cut this person out of my life or if I have to do this or that, I, I'm going to have to be mean and I don't want to be mean. Mm -hmm. And there's ways to do it nicely or is yeah. with compassion and i think a lot of people are learning how to be alone but not lonely you know mm, yeah yeah this is a big big learning type of yeah you know oh there's so much it seems like they're still gonna be going through self-care yeah self-love here you go 
Yeah, well, this, yeah, this was the first card we pulled. And I feel like, you know, she's, it just looks like this wise woman. And I feel like you're wise beyond your years, group number three. And all of this that you've been through is just giving you so much wisdom to, mm -hmm. to share one day or to do you, something's going to happen with everything that you're learning. You're going to turn this pain, this experience to this, you know, into a powerful energy for yourself and for other people. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I feel like uh, when I pull a couple of cards, almost like advice, um, messages from spirit. Okay. Okay, wow. It says um, we have a mutually beneficial venture. I, I love having this card. And it says Ooh. there is an extraordinary connection at the forefront of your life at this moment. Utilize this relationship to benefit everyone concerned. It seems like people have changed their perception of what kind of partnerships they're looking for at work and in their personal life. And it's okay. just almost like this pile is eye-opening. This connection was eye-opening in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Okay. And then we have look beyond the surface as well as empower yourself. So it makes sense. Um, it says, tune into your personal power. You are more than able to handle the situation facing you. Allow yourself to be the strong, beautiful person you are capable of being. So people know that. It seems like they, they just need to start believing it more in pile number three. Definitely. Yeah, I just pulled this transformation card. It shows all these butterflies. And it says, you are experiencing enormous change right now, which brings great blessings. So even if you're in some discomfort right now, I'm dropping cards, um, know that this is all for the benefit of you. It is working out in your favor, even though it might not completely feel like it. Um, oh, and this question just came through. This card, this deck has questions on it. And it says, what if it isn't true? And I feel like, the people that are watching this might be questioning what we're saying like well what if you're not right or what if it's mm -hmm. and this is like spirit saying like no it's this is it <laughs> so i bet he when he asked that question their head while watching it like what if mm -hmm. this isn't true or what if this isn't right like what if they're wrong this is just confirmation it says the thing you are telling yourself right now the concrete reasons why you think you don't belong you can't do it you won't get there you're not enough or it's not for you. What if it isn't true? Okay, so that's another way of looking at it. Like what all these doubts, like what are these these doubts mm -hmm. that you can't do it, you won't get there, you're not good enough. These aren't true. Like they're all just mm -hmm. these false beliefs that and you like you said earlier that you picked up from maybe your parents that you know didn't give you that kind of encouragement or belief in yourself when you were younger that you needed to to really be this independent leader that you're destined to be exactly yeah cool yeah so it's time for a soul chat close your eyes put your hands on your heart and ask the wise one within you what if it isn't true what else might be possible journal your answer what lie do i need to let go of to reach my soul's truth mm -hmm. yeah. lies that we tell ourselves a lot of times yeah, there's a lot of those I had to get rid of to be able to even start my business. I'm sure you do too. I don't know. When I started my tarot business and I started doing something completely different and wanting to help people, the the beliefs that I had, the lies I had was that I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't connected enough. I was too sensitive to be able to help people. Um, you know, I, I'm not good at explaining myself or like I need a job where that's, you know, more... Um, like a consistent revenue more than a risk taking job that would be too stressful for me. Like I had all these beliefs that I had to challenge and I was able to like release them. They still come back a little bit here and there, but for the most part, they don't, they don't keep me stuck anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's all from the past. We, for me, it was a bit different. I know what kind of situation you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think it's connected to your, um, to your father, right? I remember mm -hmm. those stories that you told me. For me, yeah. it was, I didn't have that. And yes, I will. See, 
for me, when it comes to projects, I don't know what, how that happened or how I picked that up, but somehow I never really cared what other people told me, you know, when it comes to my abilities, because I had it in my core. I can do anything that I want. Watch me type of situation, you know, yeah. and it can be coming through my um, mom. She would never like force me to go to school. She would never force me to do things that I didn't want to do, but it's because she saw that I'm responsible, right? So if obviously I was, you know, a party girl back back then, she would probably had to do something about it. But I'm my own problem. In this tarot journey, there was one point when I'm like, I want to see everything clearly. I'm not seeing things clearly enough. Almost like, you know, I want to see a person. I want to see in blueprints. I want to see everything um, karmic connections. I want to see what's the problem in the health. I want to see through life in them. And I'm and my literally my standard for myself is right up there. I don't even know if people do that. You know, if because um, we all we have different abilities in different you know types of work. If someone has it all, and at one point I was like, what are you talking about? You know, you're channeling, you're doing medium, should be doing this and that. And messages are really strong. But sometimes I'm my own enemy where I'm like, I need to do more. Like, I'm bored of this, you know. I need to, like, be the best of the best in this. And this yeah. is not okay. So that's when I stop and I'm like, why are you like this? <laughs> you know? yeah. Why are we like this? <laughs> I think I think there's a lot of reasons and I think a huge reason besides where we've been brought up and you know our parents it's it's culture and it's society yeah. I mean I don't know exactly how it is where you live but in the states you know it's there's pressure um from everybody I feel I feel it it's just like work hard you know don't sleep like drink coffee um eat yeah. fast food I don't have time to meal prep like you know, uh, sleep is for the dead, you know, and it's just so messed up. Like it's so, it's so messed up, but those comments and those beliefs are so normalized. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you grow up in that society and I think everybody, I mean, I feel like everybody feels that at times that I need to do more or I need to prove myself in this world because you see people on social media and they're, you know, there's kids that are eight years old that are like winning Nobel prizes and it makes you feel like this big and you're like, I can't even get out of bed today and this person, you know, is working on solving world peace. Like it, may, it makes you question, you know, where you're yeah. at, but we have to remember not to let that, you know, eat at us and, mm -hmm. and take away from where we're at. And, and, you know, I think it's just a constant having that constant awareness and just practicing acceptance and a lot of compassion towards yourself. You know, I have to do like little pep talks with myself, which really help where when I start to feel that frustration or I, I experience like anxiety in my chest because it's like I'm putting pressure on myself and I can usually it feels weighted and I and I know what I'm doing and I have to go, OK, no, Megan, you're doing amazing. Let's look at these accomplishments. Let's give you a round of applause like you're doing great. It's almost kind of cheesy, but for me, it helps because I'm like, oh, yeah, I am doing great. And, you know, I've, I've come so far in my life. You know, I mean, I used to be very chronically ill. I used to be in super abusive partnerships like. I used to be very weak, very insecure, couldn't even put myself on a camera, like anything like this. And I have to kind of take a look at that as well as um, just practicing acceptance and what I'm doing and say, no, that is enough. It might not feel like enough because of society, but it is enough. It is enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's also really good to surround yourself with people who remind you that. It actually yeah. happened recently when I was like, mm -hmm. I went to my friend. And I was like, we were drinking coffee. And I was like, oh, my God, I haven't done much this week. I I wanted to do so much more. Um, and she's like, you always say that, that you don't do enough, you know. And I'm like, yeah, because I have my lazy days. And then I'm like, if we were not procrastinate, procrastinating, Brigitte, we could have done more. And then she's like, I want to remind you that, listen, you're amazing at painting. You're amazing at arts and crafts. You do tarot, you're a medium, you are this and that, you graduated yeah. architecture. What else do you want from yourself? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, thank you. That's all I needed, you know? So sometimes when someone else tells you that, it's so much more powerful than you keep yeah. reminding yourself that. And so yeah, true. just surround yourself with people who remind you things like this. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. need. I have my spirit guides coming through strong lately in my life with this to just slow down because I was last week I had a super productive week and I wanted to okay I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to work 
you know, six hours a day on my business. I'm going to do this and that. And so they told me, they were like, no, you're not ready for that yet. You're not ready for that yet. Like you're too, you're stressing still, you're still clearing some things like you'll get there, but you're mm-hmm. not ready for that yet. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Like, I, I, like, I'm just, I'm trusting that they're right. And, and it feels right intuitively. It's not just like, you know, it feels right for me that I need to do that, but it's hard for me because slowing down even more makes mm-hmm. me feel way even more behind. But sometimes we have to completely wait, like slow down to the extreme to get us balanced out again, to get to that like good medium. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So thank you guys, Pilot with me. I hope yeah. you listened all the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We just kept going. I felt like we could have just talked for another hour with this group. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Maybe someone picked something, I don't know, encouraging up um, from this chat. But yeah. 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 We're going to publish this on both channels. And we hope you have a great week. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Comment below. Let us know what you thought of this uh, collaboration. And um, yeah, any more ideas you guys have for pick a cards, you're always welcome to share those as well. And we'll see you both next time. Bye. Bye.